Hey, well, you know that game, Two Truths and a Lie, where you say two things that are true, one thing that's false, and then other people have to guess where the lie is? Ooh, that is a very interesting <laughs> game. Yeah, it's a great game, but when it comes to life, uh, lies can actually be pretty devastating. Yeah, and today we're starting a brand new series all about how to identify the lies in our life and stay rooted in truth. It's going to be good. Let's get to it. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Epic Everywhere. My name is Emily, and I'm the pastor for Epic Online. And I'm Will. So glad to be hanging out with you today. Yeah, we're really glad that you're here. It's going to be a great episode today, um, but we want to begin with a bit of a somber moment. Uh, it was actually 21 years ago today that September 11th went down, and I'm sure a lot of you remember exactly uh, what had taken place, all the tragic events that surrounded that day. And so we wanted to take time to pray, to reflect, um, and to remember those that have been lost, their friends, and also their family. It's mind-blowing, I mean, that it was 21 years ago. I remember exactly where I was at my ninth grade English class when everything went down. It was definitely something that changed our world and changed me personally. Yeah, it's changed so much of just the world around us. And uh, we know that there's lots of tragic events that continue to happen right here in our city. So much senseless loss of life. And so we wanted to pray not only over 9-11, but we also wanted to pray over so many people that have been impacted right here in Philadelphia. Uh, so come on, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Uh, we just thank you that we can come to you as our source of comfort. And we take time, Lord, to remember um, all the people that uh, senselessly uh, perished on 9-11 21 years ago, um, and just how many people have been impacted and so are still deeply uh, affected by it. Uh, today, we just ask that your peace is with them, Lord, that their memory uh, lingers on, Lord, and that their legacy continues to stand. Uh, God, we're so grateful that you indeed are our champion, that you're our source uh, of, of victory and that you're our source of strength. And so we turn to you and ask that you give us the ability to trust you uh, with our today, our tomorrow, and our future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've tried so hard to see it Took me so long to believe Someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection could never earn it. You give what we don't deserve, and you take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all Now I can finally see it You're teaching me how to receive it So let all striving see So this is my Champion 
when I lift my voice and shout, everyone comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me when I open up my mouth miracles start breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given me oh. when I lift my voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority oh, Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth Miracles start breaking now I have the authority By the power of your name I see it In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered it all Well, today is a great day to be at church because we're kicking off a brand new message series called Two Truths and a Lie. Yeah, and our hope is that you experience a whole bunch of freedom in some of those areas in your life that maybe have been held back by some lies. So we're believing that God's gonna move in a powerful way in your life. I'm hoping it for my life and, and certainly for you too, Will. For sure, and as we get going, we're gonna take a moment and welcome anyone that's here for the first time. Yes! Hey, we're so excited that you're here. We really do believe that church should be fun and meaningful and that it should make a difference in your life. And that's really exactly what we hope you experience today. And whether you've been hanging out with us for five minutes or for some time now, make sure you get your phone out. It is time to text in. Well, every time that you hang out with us, we ask that you take a moment to text in and check in so we know that you're hanging out with us today. And the best way to do that is simply use your phone to check in right here on the QR code, or you can text the word here to the number that's on the screen. And when you text in for the first time, we're gonna send you a free gift for hanging out with us today. That's right. We're so glad that you're here. Um, also over on the Hub, you can take time to let us know how we can pray for you this week. And there's a button that you can give. Uh, so we want to take time to thank all of you who are part of giving and part of the impact that's happening right here in our city. Go ahead and hit that button or you can head over to our website, epic.church slash give. We just love to be able to celebrate all of your generosity. And something cool that happened this summer is this is love. We all got to stack hands and give, serve, and just show love and passion to all the people around us in our community. So we want to take a moment and just highlight all the great things that went down. So check out this video. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. These are our marching orders. Every year we come together to unleash a wave of generosity and love in our city through service and giving. Organizations like Epic that to say, how can we fill a gap that's out there? and then meet the need. And I'm telling you, it is phenomenal. It is great to see. And I am excited for what's to come ahead. This is our opportunity to come together as a group of churches and let everybody know that they matter to God. We believe that what we do actually matters. We're not gonna be able to solve everything, but we can do our part. This is a game changer for those organizations. And it's a life changer for the people that those organizations serve. Let's come together and do something about what we can do something about. Because this is love. 
Well, so much to celebrate when it comes to all that God did during This Is Love. Yeah, it was really cool to be able to see so many of you who are a part of Epic Online serving in your very own community, your very own backyard. So shout out to all of you who were involved in that. Um, and clearly, like This Is Love is definitely one of my favorite things that happens in the summertime. And coming up in the fall, Will, we actually have a special announcement about something going down. You want to spill the beans? Yes, our favorite <laughs> night of the year is back. November 12th, we are hosting a night to remember. We get to throw a special prom experience for our friends in the special needs community. Yeah, it, it's really remarkable. Uh, you might have heard us talk about this in the past. It's uh, a prom indeed, as Will had said, for our special needs community. We're talking a full on red carpet. We're talking paparazzi, dinner, dancing, just a huge night of celebration. And it doesn't happen without a lot of volunteers. We're talking like hundreds of volunteers are needed to pull this thing off. It's gonna be great. Yeah, so November 12th is going down. And like Emily said, we need your help. You're invited, your friends are invited, your family is invited, your neighbors, your coworker, everybody. everybody. We all need to stack hands <laughs> and make this an amazing night for our friends. That's right, make sure that you're there, mark your calendars and stay tuned for more information. Well, as a part of this series, every co-host that I'm with every single week, we're gonna play two truths and a lie. So Will already hooked me up with his two truths and his lie, let's look. Okay, so Will has two middle names. He performed at a country music special. Look at you, Will. Howdy. Uh, <laughs> he also saw uh, Serena Williams play her last tennis match in person. Now, what you love to know which are the truths, which is the lie, eh? You're gonna have to wait <laughs> to the end of the episode. Uh, but right now, we're gonna go ahead and get to today's message of two truths and a lie. What's up, everybody? My name's Kent, I'm lead pastor here at Epic, and I'm so glad you're doing church with us today. We're actually kicking off a brand new series called Two Truths and a Lie. Do you remember that game, Two Truths and a Lie? It's this game where you, you say two things about yourself that are true and one thing that isn't, and then everybody else has to try and figure out which one is the lie. Now, one of the strategies to winning at this game is to make sure that your lie is believable. Because if you can get someone to believe the lie, then you got them. Well, that's not just true in the game. It's also true in life too. Like if someone can get you to believe a lie, then they got you. And here's why. It's because a lie believed to be true will affect you as if it is. Did you get that? A lie believed to be true will affect you as if it is. Now listen, I'm not very proud of this, but um, it illustrates my point. Uh, whenever my kids were in diapers, I told my wife that they didn't have changing stations in the men's room because I didn't want to have to be the one to change their diapers. And she believed it. And I made it through two whole children without having to change their diapers in public until one day we were out with some friends and uh, the husband of this other couple uh, got up, grabbed their baby and started heading toward the bathroom. And Tiffany quickly kind of looked at him and said, where are you going? And he says, I'm going to the bathroom to change the diaper. She just looked at me like, are you serious? It was, it was not like a real high moment in my husband career, but um, anyways, it illustrates the point that a lie believed to be true will affect you as if it is. Just saying, right? Now, it's not just you know silly things like that, but, but it can be more serious than that. And it can affect you in more serious ways than just that. Like if you believe that you can't win, then you never will because you won't even try. A lie believed to be true will affect you as if it is. Hey, if you believe that you can't trust anyone, then you'll never allow yourself to get close enough to another person to find out. Because a lie believed to be true will affect you as if it is. See, truth is, we all struggle with this. Like we've all believed a lie or two or 30. <laughs> For some of us, those, those lies that we believe, man, they've been with us since we were kids as a result of something that someone said or did, or, or, or for others of us, um, some of the lies that we believe, um, they come as a result of some traumatic experience we went to. And, and then for others of us, man, we don't know where they came from, but they're here nonetheless. And, and you might not realize it, but those lies, they're robbing you. They're robbing you of the life that God wants you to have. Now look what the scripture says, John chapter 10. Um, Jesus is talking to a group of religious people and he, he says, I don't know if you realize it or not, but there's a thief in this world and, and he's out to, to, to harm you, to hurt you. In fact, Jesus said it this way, he says, a thief comes only to steal, 
to kill and destroy. Now listen, those are strong words. Steal, kill, destroy. It's like, oh Jesus, like I don't know about that. Like even if there is somebody out there, maybe, you know, I think maybe their job is more to like kind of just inconvenience me, bother me a little bit, but still kill and destroy, that seems like a little much. And I think, I think that's part of our problem. I, I think sometimes um, we underestimate just how serious our adversary really is. The scripture says that he's the father of lies. It says that he, he roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So this really is serious. But then Jesus goes on to, uh, to give a powerful contrasting statement here in this verse. He says this, but unlike the thief, he says, I have come that they, meaning those that were there then and those of us that are here now, everyone, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. He says, yes, there is an enemy of your soul, but I've come so that people can have life. And not just any kind of life, but I've come so that people can have life to the full. He, he, like, like the best kind of life, an abundant life, an extraordinary life, a, a not average kind of life. The kind of life that, that whenever you meet these people who have this kind of life, you're like, man, like they've just got something different. Listen, you need to know this. Every single day, there is a war that wages on the battlefield of your mind. It's a war between truth and lies. And I'm telling you, so much of experiencing what God wants you to have in this life comes down to not letting those lies rob you of it. It's true. So much of experiencing the life that God wants you to have comes down to not letting the lies rob you of what he wants for you. And really, that's what this series is all about. It's about breaking free from the lies that are holding you back. Listen, uh, God gave us our minds, right? They're capable of amazing things. They can help us, but they can also hurt us. Uh, just like a plane can drop a bomb or bring aid and food and supplies. Just like a syringe can deliver poison or deliver a medicine. The same is true with our thoughts in our minds. Now, what if you could learn how to identify and deal with the lies that are holding you back? What if you could turn your thinking from a super problem into a super power? Now here's the thing, uh, the Bible talks uh, about how we think, the way that we think, more often than you would suspect. In fact, Romans chapter 12 verse two says this, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Listen, I love this verse and in the instructions that are here from the Apostle Paul. Um, now, if you're, if you're more of a skeptic, uh, maybe you're like, you don't really do church, maybe uh, you don't believe in God, maybe, maybe you're only watching because you lost a bet and you know, boom, here I am right here in your living room. Sorry, by the way, if that's the case and good on you for making it this far in the message. Um, but even if you're a skeptic, I think you're gonna like this verse too. You see, as, as followers of Jesus, we believe that this is ancient wisdom that's inspired by God. And the same God who, who created everything, including science, and specifically in this case, neuroscience, which is how our brain works. See, we are creatures of habit, and we get into patterns of thinking. It's likely right now that your brain has developed several different patterns of thinking, some good, some not so good. And those not so good ones, they're actually wired to sabotage you. Now, you, you may have uh, heard someone say or do something damaging in the past, and ever since then, as a result, you've repeated some kind of lie to yourself or thought like this, I'm not worth loving, or I'm not smart enough, or good enough, or attractive enough, or I can't trust anyone. And you've repeated that thought so much to yourself that some pathways, some patterns have been formed. And they're so strong that you just accept those things as true, even though they're not. And you see the whole world through that lens now. It colors everything. Or maybe you grew up believing something about an entire group of people. Like maybe you, you learned it from your family or friends or in school or based on a single interaction. And ever since then, there's, there's been a pathway or a pattern that's grown in your mind, a thought, 
process that's grown in your mind over time. And, and because of that, you actually incorrectly see everyone who's associated with that group or that tribe or that camp because of one interaction you had or because of a pattern of thinking that you started that you learned from someone else. That's how we develop prejudice. Now, the good news is that there's a way to change it. Yay! Uh, Paul said that we can be transformed or changed by the renewing of our mind, which means to change our thoughts. It, he says that whenever you do that, not only will you be transformed, but you can learn how to resist the pattern of this world and enjoy God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. How about that for a promise? And Proverbs 23 verse seven, I think says it even more directly. It says this, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. He's saying, hey, the, the thoughts that you have in your heart, they impact who you are. Like your, your thought life shapes your life life. It's true, it really is. Now, if that's true, what if we could be intentional about that? Well, you can, and it's simpler than you might imagine. All it takes are some new soundtracks. Now, a soundtrack is like a repetitive thought that you have that plays in the background of your life. Now, you might not even notice that they're there, but they are, and they have the power to change everything. I mean, think about a movie, if you will, right? Uh, just imagine this scene. Uh, it's in a neighborhood. There's a, a picket fence. Kids are playing on the sidewalk, right? And if you see that scene, then all of a sudden, in the background, they're playing This Is The Soundtrack. You're like, oh man, like uh, immediately you know, oh no, 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 this is not good. Like there's probably gonna be a creepy clown in a sewer somewhere. There's a red balloon, don't go near the sewers. It's gonna be bad, right? You just know immediately because the soundtrack that's in the background. Or imagine this, same scene, exact same scene, but then this soundtrack is playing in the background. Oh, as soon as you hear it, you're like, oh man, we are in for a good romantic comedy. It's gonna be great, we're gonna love it. Or in my case, you're like, oh man, I'm gonna take an awesome nap. It's gonna be awesome, right? And the point is this, the soundtrack changes everything. Listen, your thoughts are, are the internal soundtracks that you listen to. And over the years, you've built a soundtrack about your career, about your work. You built a soundtrack about your relationships. You built a soundtrack about relationships in general, uh, about specific people you've built a soundtrack, about politics. You built a soundtrack about you, about your hopes, your dreams, your goals, your limitations, and every other aspect of your life. Listen, if you, if you listen to any thought long enough, what happens is that it becomes part of your personal playlist. And like I said, those, those thoughts, those soundtracks, they can hurt or they can help. Like your thoughts determine your actions and your actions is what leads to results. So if you wanna see some different results, if you wanna have some different outcomes, it's important that we change how we think. Not just what we're doing, we start with what we think, and that we deal with those internal soundtracks. Uh, John Acuff uh, recently wrote a book about this, and he suggests that we do three things. Uh, here's the first one, number one, he says, retire your broken soundtracks. Number two, he says, replace them with new soundtracks. Number three, he says, repeat the new ones until they become as automatic as the old ones. Retire, replace, repeat. Can you tell that he's the son of a pastor? <laughs> we love alliteration. Retire, replace, repeat. And we're gonna talk about this over the next few weeks, but I wanna take the time that we have left and kinda hone in or zero in on this first one. How is it that you can be able to identify and then retire the broken soundtracks? In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse five, Paul says this, he says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive, or we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And Paul says, hey, the key to identifying the lies in our life and then retiring those broken soundtracks is to take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. 
It means you take every thought and you grab that thing before you let it continue to do its work and affect you and change how you see things. You examine that thought. You take it captive. You make it obedient to Christ. And so how do you do that? Like, what does that even look like, making it obedient to Christ? First, here's some examples of some broken soundtracks. Here's one. Everyone is a better mom than me. That's a broken soundtrack. Here's another one. I, I, I've messed up too many times in my past. I can never change my future. It's a broken soundtrack. Here's another one. Because I didn't have a good dad, I'm not equipped to be a good dad to my own kids. Broken soundtrack. Or things are always going to be this way. What's the point of even trying? It's a broken soundtrack. Now you can probably think of your own broken soundtrack. I know that for me, a broken soundtrack I have when it comes to actually my weight is, you know, I can't win. Why even try? Now, for you, you might have to think about the areas of your life where you've struggled, right? Think about what that is. And here's the thing. If you think about that, just pause and listen for the first thoughts that you have in response to thinking about that thing. Oftentimes, those are the broken soundtracks. So how do you retire them? What do you do? How do you take every thought captive and then retire those broken soundtracks? Well, you start by asking your loudest soundtracks a very simple question. Here it is. Is it true? Is it true? Listen, one of the greatest mistakes that we make is we assume that all of our thoughts are true and they're not. Man, if you would just stop and ask this question, you'll be shocked at how often you realize your thoughts are lies, that they're just not true. And I get how we fall into believing that they are true because like we hear them from a very familiar voice, our own. Like it's our own voice that says, no, you can never do that. Or that's not for you, or you know, you can never win, so why try? It's our own thought, our own voice that we hear say that, and so we think, oh, it must be true, but it's not. Is the story you are telling yourself about you even true? Is it true? Now, take this soundtrack, for example. I'm the worst mom ever. Really? Like, is that true? Like, was there a contest and then everybody voted and you won? Like, the worst mom ever award? No, I doubt that that's true. Here's another one. I'm too old. Like, I, I missed my chance. I'm past my prime. Like, I could, I could never, I, I missed the opportunity. Is that true? You know what's funny about that one? Is that oftentimes, um, when you're young, the thing that you hear all the time is you're too young. You don't have enough experience, you can't do that. What makes you think you could, you could attempt something like that? And then all of a sudden you blink and you're too old. It's like, oh no, you're too old. You're, you're not experienced or uh, you're not relevant enough anymore. You don't have what it takes anymore. And it's like, what? Like at what point was I the perfect age to do this thing, you know? It's like, I just, I missed it somehow. No, you gotta ask yourself the question. Is it true? Are you too old, really? If you're not dead, you're not done. Come on. Are you too young? Really? Is it true? And some other questions that, that you can ask um, whenever you evaluate, take these thoughts captive and evaluate whether or not they're true is, is it helpful? Like, is it helpful? Honestly, sometimes there's soundtracks that are true, but they're not helpful to play over and over and over again. If they leave you paralyzed, and, and just not able to move forward at all, then that's probably not a helpful soundtrack to be listening to. And here's another one, is it kind? Like if you said the same thing that you're saying to yourself to a friend, what would that do to them? Right, is it kind? If it isn't kind to say to a friend, then I'm telling you it's not kind to say to yourself. It's not useful, not at all. And so that's how you take captive every thought. And that's how you retire the broken soundtracks in your life. You ask that clarifying question, is it true? Gang, once you start doing this, you realize that there's soundtracks all around you, everywhere. Like individuals have soundtracks, couples have soundtracks, families have soundtracks, teams have soundtracks, companies have soundtracks, even churches have soundtracks. And what are some of ours as a church? Every person matters. Here's another one, leaders go first. Here's another one, we lead the way in generosity. We're for 
Philly. These are soundtracks, ways of thinking that keep us focused where we need to be focused. You see, your thoughts, they can work for you or they can work against you. This is how you turn your thinking from a super problem to a super power. Listen, you ever wondered, I think this is probably where this series can, can maybe be the most helpful. You ever wonder why you keep doing things you don't want to do? You ever wonder that? Listen, many of our most destructive habits and behaviors are rooted in some lie that we've agreed with. And Carlos Whitaker wrote a book called Kill the Spider. And uh, he tells a story about how he almost lost his wife and his family because of some immoral decisions that he had made. His wife found out what was going on and, and she grabbed the kids and, and she left them. I mean, for months she was gone. And through counseling and some serious, serious spiritual work, his family was actually restored. But in, in that whole process, and even after, I mean, they went to, to counseling years after that whole thing happened, he noticed a pattern in his life. It, it seemed like every time something good happened in his life, he would do something to mess it up. Like he would self-sabotage. He's like, what's, what's that about? And so he called his dad one day, his dad was a pastor, and um, he called his dad one day, he, he says, Dad, do you, I've noticed this thing about myself. Every time something good happens, I do something to mess it up. Like I do something to sabotage it. Like, do you know why I do that? And his dad said, uh, Carlos, I have a story to tell you. And he's like, oh boy, buckle up. Here comes the story from dad. And he said this, he says, whenever I was in Panama, preaching my very first revival. I gave an invitation at the end of the sermon for people to come forward, and only one lady came up. It was this old lady. And when she came up and she walked up to him, she said, she said, Pastor, would you pray that God would clean the cobwebs out of my life? And he said, he thought to himself, that's a very poetic way to say that, and he said, sure. And he prayed with her that God would clean the cobwebs out of her life. Well, the second night of this uh, series of meetings, he preaches again and, and gives another invitation for people to come up. And she came up again. And except this time she says, she says, Pastor, would you pray again that, that God would clean the cobwebs out of my life? Except this time, would you pray harder? And so he was like, sure, I'll, I'll pray harder. So, so he prayed with her that God would clean the cobwebs out of her life. And then the third night of the series of meetings, she comes up again and she says, Pastor, will you pray again that God would clean the cobwebs out of my life. And this time he looked back and said, no, I will not pray that. We've been praying the wrong prayer. He says, tonight we pray that God kills the spider. <laughs> and then he says, he, his dad looked at him and said to him, Carlos, you are a professional cobweb cleaner. <laughs> you constantly just try to clean up the cobwebs of sin in your life. What you need to do is go to the root. You need to kill the spider. Listen, gang, we all have spiders. A spider is just an agreement that we've made with a lie. It's a broken soundtrack that plays in the background, right? Listen, the lie that we believe, that's actually what causes the behavior that we struggle to change. And so whether it's um, drinking too much, right? Too much alcohol, too excess, if it's porn, or lying, or shopping, or overworking, or people-pleasing. Those things, they are the issue. Now, those things, that's what we use to medicate the lie that we believe, the thing that's behind the thing. And if you really wanna see transformation in your life, then you can't just go around cleaning cobwebs. You can't just deal with the symptoms. Now you gotta identify the lie, and you gotta kill the spider. If you do that, then, then we'll be able to do what the Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. He says this, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Did you catch that first part? Whatever is true. Listen, don't let the lies of the enemy rob you of the life that God has always dreamed for you to have and experience. So how do you do that? Number one, 
Retire the broken soundtracks. Number two, replace them with new soundtracks. And number three, repeat the new ones until they become as automatic as the old ones. More about those last two in the days to come. Uh, until then, let me pray for you. God, we love you, and we thank you so much that you first loved us. Father, I pray you give us the wisdom to know what to do with what we just heard and the courage to do it. Lord, I pray um, that you would help us to be open. I pray that you would use this series to do in our lives what we can't do on our own. God, help us to identify the lies that are holding us back. Lord, help us to replace them with your truth. And God, we just thank you that you'll do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, everybody, I love you. See you next week. Well, thanks so much for that message, Kent. Uh, it's pretty crazy to think about all the lies that we've been telling ourselves for really far too long, but really encouraging to be reminded that we can take the power back. We've got control over it to flip the script and live a life of freedom and just a better overall life. Yeah, it's been such a great day, but before you go, make sure you take a moment to text in and check in if you haven't. We want to make sure that you stay connected with all the great things we have going on. And if you heard anything today that was impactful for you, it's probably going to be encouraging to someone else. So make sure you hit that share button. That's right. And Will, it's time to circle back to your two truths and your lie so we can learn what's what. So let's remind the people okay. of what you said. And where is it? Where's the lie? All right, so number one, you guys can officially say William Douglas Christopher Gwynn because I have two middle names. Stop, you and Kent have two middle names? Yes, very similar, Crazy. huh? Crazy. All right, and then number two here, um, I pre performed a country music special. That is absolutely 100% true. That, Howdy, y'all. That's exactly where I thought the lie was. I was like, that has that to be, not no? Lie. But the lie is definitely that I watched Serena play her last tennis match in person. I actually got to watch her play her second to last tennis match in person, and that was the better one because she actually won, so it was awesome. I mean, still a legendary experience to watch Serena twirl on center court. That's right. Uh, come on, that's that's fantastic, but we, we have to know more about this country music special, Will. Did you have like a like a cowboy hat, a belt buckle, and a little howdy doody going on, or? The world will never know. Where's the proof? Fifth grade, I got to sing with Kenny Rogers. It was amazing, but enough celebrating me. Today is a very special day because we want to take a moment and celebrate you, Emily, because this weekend it is your birthday! So we just want to take a moment and say thank you so much for all that you do to host this online, being such a great friend to everybody at the studio, at our church, and obviously watching around the world. Gosh, guys, uh, thank you. It's a pleasure. I'm gifted with another year. Let's go. Best year yet. Um, and we're so excited that you were here today. Have an awesome rest of your day, and we'll see you next week. Well, hey, thanks again for doing church with us today. Listen, if you're new here, we want you to know we do church just like this online every single week, and we'd love for you to be a part. Now, if you're local, we have live in-person gatherings at locations in and around the city called Epic Live. It's a full-on party. So check out our website for a location that's nearest to you. Now listen, we'd really love to get to meet you. So I wanna personally invite you to something called the Welcome Party. It's an opportunity for us to connect, hear some of your story, and share some of ours. So just text the word here to the number on the screen and we'll make sure we get you all hooked up. Listen, I really do believe that God has an incredible plan for your life. And we just wanna do our part to help you discover what that is. So thanks again for hanging out with us today. Hopefully we'll see you again live or online next week.